Welcome to another uh, podcast from the Cleveland Clinic. I'm uh, Osama Wazne. I'm the section head of electrophysiology here at the clinic, and I'm joined today with Dr. Jaber, who's the director of nuclear cardiology and the imaging core lab, and also Dr. Owen Donnellan, who's our superstar uh, fellow. Uh, so he- today we have a very interesting topic we would like to discuss. Uh, Dr. Jaber, can we talk in general about fitness and uh, cardiology? Thank you so much, Osama, for uh, having a thank you, uh, Owen. This is a great opportunity to actually highlight some of some of the great work uh, you've been doing for the past few years. Uh, so uh, what we have always, we had an interest here, a keen interest in at, uh, at our institution is, uh, of course, uh, we're in the business of uh, sickness, but also in the business of health. And one of the factors we look at when we look at, uh, at health is we look at uh, how fit people are when they come in, because it's usually a marker of how well they were doing uh, as far as uh, controlling the risk factors, uh, participating in exercise programs, and all these things. So over the years, we looked at a, a, a wonderful database we have. We started collecting this from the 1990s, early 1990s. And this uh, extends from 1990 all the way to now. And we, uh, these are individuals who were referred or came to the Cleveland Clinic and had a stress test done at the Cleveland Clinic. So it's probably one of the biggest uh, databases in the world. Uh, actually, it is as far as uh, the time frame it, uh, it covers and the number of patients in it, as, far, as well as the uh, balanced database, because it's a database that includes uh, different uh, genders, uh, as far as uh, females, males, and also uh, represents uh, many uh, uh, minor, minority groups in it. Uh, it's uh, right now it's over we have in it over 450,000 patients Uh, so this is this is huge so we capitalized on that and we start to figure out what what kind of uh, things can predict uh, outcomes mainly death uh, from it so a few years ago we uh, uh, published one of the first uh, landmark papers from it uh, looking at uh, exercise uh, capacity on a treadmill stress test and how we link it to mortality and we found that the association between how well you do on the stress test and how long you live is actually stronger than most risk factors we think about, like smoking, hypertension, uh, high cholesterol, uh, all these things. So uh, being fit probably is as important, if not more important, than any of these risk factors that we keep in our mind. Fantastic. So, um, so Owen, oh, now taking that into uh, in, in the background and into consideration, what prompted you to work on this project? So first tell us about this project, what it is. And then uh, tell us also a little bit about the results and how they may impact our patients. Thank you. Um, So there's been a lot of research done over the past few years, which has looked at the role of modifying the risk factors Dr. Jaber mentioned, such as diabetes, high blood pressure, smoking, etc., on atrial fibrillation burden, the amount of atrial fibrillation people have, as well as their outcomes after ablation. Uh, We've previously looked uh, at diabetes, weight loss, so we felt that this was a good opportunity to assess the role of physical fitness uh, and its impact on outcomes from atrial fibrillation ablation. We studied over 590 patients and found that the better someone performed on on an exercise stress test, uh, the more fit they were the better they did after AFib ablation, the less AFib recurrence they had, and also the more likely they were to survive for a longer period of time following the ablation. That's very important uh, data here. And it's on the same theme of that if we also take care of the other risk factors, mainly obesity and uh, with weight loss, for example. But now we're adding another layer that also fitness, physical fitness, portends very good prognosis in those patients. Was there any inflection point? Was there any J point where, for example, being too fit is really not, not good for outcomes? Because uh, you know, previously there was something in, in the media that, uh, you know, especially in men, that there could be a, you know, an inflection point where you know, overdoing it may not be a good thing. Uh, what we found in our study, um, when, we, when we further classified patients into percentiles and also according to their functional capacity, poor to high, we found that the, the highest fitness group or the highest functional capacity actually performed the best. Now, um, I'm not sure how many en- endurance athletes we had in the cohort, but 
uh, certainly from this data, it would seem that the more fit someone is, uh, the, the better they're likely to do from ablation. So Dr. Jaber, I want uh, just to summarize and also to put this in perspective for our patients. What is the take home message for our patients? So there are a couple of things that I think are important from, uh, from this work. Uh, one is uh, you guys do a great job in uh, treating atrial fibrillation uh, by medications and we're probably one of the largest ablation centers in the, in the country, if not the world. Uh, so ablation usually reserved for patients who are uh, symptomatic from atrial fibrillation. Uh, and uh, the success rate is often genetic. So if I am uh, presenting myself right now to, a, to an institution and saying, you know, I need uh, to have a fib, a fib or it's recommended for me, a fib ablation, we usually quote these numbers, uh, 50%, 60%, 70%. And every center has its different experiences and stuff like that. So this is one more tool in the hands of the physician and the patient uh, in the shared decision making of saying, you know what, uh, here we have a stress test that you have performed in the past two, three months. And from this stress test, from just the result of the how, how far you went on the treadmill, I can tell you how likely you're going to be in, how likely you're going to benefit from this, you know, a procedure, a fibrillation is not a trivial procedure, it has its uh, morbidities and it's, uh, it's a, an expensive procedure too. So if a patient, like uh, Owen's data demonstrated, a patient in the lowest fitness level, these are patients who did not do very well on the treadmill. If those patients are going to have a fib ablation, we saw that at least four out of five of them at two and a half years would be back in atrial fibrillation. So you can actually do a granular uh, informed consent to the patient, one. Two is we don't know if actually you if you improve your fitness over time and then you come back to the procedure, would that actually lead to improvement in uh, chances of remaining sensitive? So that's a very important aspect and I want to emphasize that, is that now at the clinic we have actually a comprehensive approach when we are treating our atrial fibrillation ablation uh, patients or atrial fibrillation patients uh, as a whole. So now we actually send them to preventive cardiology and we uh, try to manage their weight we try to manage their diabetes, hypertension, and now we can add to this a fitness program. So this is an incentive to tell our patients that if you want to get the best possible outcome out of an ablation, or just by having atrial fibrillation, is also you have to add this component of fitness, and hopefully we will, able, we will be able to provide that uh, in our uh, program at, at the clinic. So that's the other take home message I think is the important one is that we should put, you know, encourage our patients to become as physically fit as possible because then uh, the outcome of the ablation would, uh, you know, would rely on that. And, uh, and probably, you know, Owen, I don't know if, if you agree with us that probably one of the, of the benefits of fitness is, is reversing or controlling some of the risk factors associated with atrial fibrillation, such as hypertension, uh, you know, uh, uh, obesity, sleep apnea, uh, all these things. What do you think about that? Absolutely. Um, there's certainly been some data in the literature assessing the impact of improving various risk factors and the burden of AFib, the amount of AFib someone has. And that data has shown that improving risk factors is associated with a lower amount of AFib and also uh, less, less severity of symptoms. People feel better. Okay, well, th this has been great. Uh, I think, again, once again, to summarize that uh, fitness matters, physical fitness matters, and um, we encourage all our patients to be as fit as possible to get the best possible outcomes after an AFib ablation. Thank you very much.